Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. I wanted to get a quick video up as a reminder um, that what the guides have told us, and again, if you're not subscribed to all three channels, Evolutionary Energy Arts, that's the original, and that had strikes against it, which now we've passed that point. So we're, <laughs> for the moment, free over there for a while. <laughs> EE Arts which is closing in on 20,000 subscribers as they show as they've really slowed the roll. We had 20,000 subscribers in maybe the first like 5 months of evolutionary, but the system again, they always want to uh, well, control the narrative. So we we understand. And then Hearts Home, which is the newest channel. And yesterday we did one on the anniversary of the miracle of Fatima. What was really going on, as, as many people are becoming aware of, uh, there are unseen forces at play, some good, some not so good. And then there's tons and tons of other beings from other places that actually do come to just watch the show. It, it, this is a huge show, guys. And there's, <clears throat> there's a whole lot of different uh, videos coming out, too. And people are saying, well, what are those strange lights? What are they doing? Are they good? Are they bad? Most of them, I would say, are neutral and they're watching the show. Yeah. And, you know, again, you can go into uh, a lot of the Hindu holy books and you can also go and explore the mythology of all the different indigenous people around the world. And you'll find openly talking about beings from other places that come here it's just open it's only the system that's covered that up if you haven't seen hearts ohm yet uh we do cover a lot of mantras because mantras can raise your frequency very quickly because it, they are contacting beings that we are in contact with in a golden age beings that are actually truly benevolent and, and not just using humanity as slaves or an energy resource or worse and meditations biofield tuning light code activations the physical body is only one aspect of us we are much more than the physical body some people know this through direct experience great teachers and gurus yoga and the real Yeshua Jesus, because, you know, you might not or you might have figured out that you, you can't trust you can't trust the power structure that exists on the planet to give you an actual, actual accurate picture of what things really were. And again, the control system always wipes out the true teachings of, of these amazing beings that come to simply liberate humanity during a dark time. And so we want to thank everybody for your support over on Patreon. We really couldn't do it without you guys as the Patreon is growing uh, faster and faster, thankfully. Uh, Robbie and Mike, thank you. Marquis, thank you. And Carla, thank you for uh, being our newest family members over there. Everything goes up over there. Um, we are way out. Uh, we would love to do lives, but we simply don't have the capability to do lives anymore. We used to do lives in the past. It, there is a chance. I did see uh, cables being laid uh, not too far from us. Uh, but basically right now all we have is is satellite and that's because again we are far enough out to where we're not being bombarded by FIVEG constantly and this is what we have been guided to do uh, it makes it harder to get up videos sometimes videos take hours to get up hours to get up um, and sometimes you know they get lost in transition a little bit um, in certain areas like running into problems with bit shoot or running into problems with brightian or rumble um, but everything goes up on patreon so you could always go view on patreon there are patreon only videos that uh, would you would get a 30 second preview of if you're not a patreon member uh, again, you can become a member for basically what amounts to three cents a day uh, to watch every video and the Patreon uh, exclusive as well. And it does support us in our work. So, yes, uh, the eclipse, that's the big thing. And the guides wanted to reiterate during the eclipse, it is very helpful if you envision yourself and your area 
covered in white light, a, a protective white light that is going to raise the frequencies. So you might choose to meditate, you might choose to do mantras and meditate, you might choose to say prayers and ask for protection again from uh, whatever you're comfortable with, whether it's the archangels, Yeshua, Mary, uh, you know, Babaji, Buddha, what, whatever, you know, source again, you know, because source is in all of us. So it, it's really the case where we have tremendous powers of manifestation. It's just that most people don't believe in themselves, simply put. They don't believe in their power to manifest and, and to change things. And that's because that's the indoctrination we've been given. Ah, yes, absolutely. Everything about this system is about taking power away from us. But the reality is we are very, very powerful creators. And and don't forget, you know, I mean, the, the sun, the solar eclipse, very curious time where the light gets blocked out. But the reason why we bring up doing your own meditation and expanding yourself is because you yourself are made of light and you can push back any darkness that might try to approach or cringe upon you you know we're going to be home we're going to be doing our meditation that's what we're or mantras we're going to be doing something but we're going to be making sure that our light is expansive wherever we are and for us our meditations always start with mantras that's just us and, and our choice. So for us, you know, pretty much between around 1030 and noon is when this is going to be going on. Uh, it depends on where you are. Uh, again, this is a big one. This is a big one. And this article is talking about uh, some of you that are in the line of maybe 75, 80% to 100%. Uh, coverage, you're going to be able to feel it get cooler uh, because the sun is going to be blocked. And that effect would be stronger if we were uh, right in the heart of summer. But as we're heading to the fall, the angle of the, the sun in relation to the earth and the moon changes that. A lot of people are saying, what the heck was that? And especially in the Texas area, as you see this light. Now, you know, with Elon uh, and Starlink, as we see, he's given you a slow-mo video of Falcon Heavy launching off during the pad. That will, may, may very well have been Elon, and it certainly gives us an excuse for anything we see. We can always just look at any lights now and say, well, I wonder if that's Elon. I wonder if that's Starlink. But the reality is, you know, Elon does know the bigger picture. Elon is a... Um, well, you know, he, he's up there in the food chain as, as far as the uh, people that we see with the amount of true knowledge of what's going on. He, he does know. Mm -hmm. He knows. He knows quite a bit. So a lot of these people who are at the top, um, they keep they hold a lot back. They, they have to sit on a lot. They have to um, be very careful with their words because they know everything that they speak. Uh, is probably going to be in the media in some shape or form. Yeah, and, and who would be surprised if, if someday Elon Musk comes out as a superhero, like an Iron Man, a Batman, and, you know, when you think about it, again, the movies are softening us up for, you know, different time periods that are a little bit farther out. After the war, everything's going to shift, and, and then the preparation is going to be more about understanding that we're not alone and getting the people ready for uh, introducing the ETs to the people and the public. But right now we have, you know, maybe a, a year and a half of, of this, <laughs> you know, somewhere around there. I, I do think it's going to be a shorter time period than World War II for sure, which ran basically six years. And I think it's even going to be shorter than World War I as well. Um, but unfortunately, because of the technologies involved, it could be a lot more devastating than both of them combined. As you see, the IDF is currently bombing southern Lebanon, so an IDF Israeli defense force. And, and again... They label something defense, but this is, uh, you know, this is bombing another country. Isn't that kind of offensive? Uh, well, they're just defending themselves. Again, you got to look at the bigger picture. 
And it, it's amazing. I, I was posting uh, on Twitter because uh, somebody posted a map of, of, of Lebanon in 1947 and said, uh, some, one of the comments was, uh, are you posting Hamas propaganda? No, that's just a physical, obvious r relic of what was. That's not propaganda. That was a historically accurate map. You know, again, you got to see the bigger picture. But what happens is people get so invested in a side that they, they won't look at the other side. They won't reasonably say, okay, I could see why these people are upset. <sighs> you know, this is the problem. It's the problem. And you have a massive protest in support of Palestine in London. Again, you know, this is growing. These, these numbers are growing. And yet, what's been set up? What's been set up is just a massacre, you know, that is being ready to, to come. They have set us up this way. But at the same time, we've gotten from the guides that a lot of the, the immigrant migrants that are coming into these different countries with the express purpose of, of <laughs> jihad and repatri repatriation, because this is what's happening here. They've been promised money, homes, everything. They're going to you know, get that universal basic income. Uh, you know, they're just being promised a better life, as so many have in the past. You know, again, the Irish and the Irish famine coming in droves into the United States. And, you know, many of them were not welcomed by the ones that were already here. And all of them, you know, again, Europeans. And that was all at the cost of what was Native Indigenous Americans of you know different backgrounds too different backgrounds than we're even taught because uh, somebody else mentioned atlantis and and yeah the atlantean civilization was one in which extraterrestrials were coming and going all the time the atlantean civilization wasn't just people that you know had been here for generations after generations thousands and tens of thousands of years no Again, Earth is one massive refugee camp. Uh, I would love to get that point across. Earth itself is one massive res refugee camp. As above, so below. You can apply this to everything. And as our perception changes and as we learn and as we are able to view higher up in different densities, we can see how much this mimics you know a universal type of situation that's going on here but the controllers have taken it and manipulated it to a point where this definitely feeds them it feeds them at a point where they can remain comfortable and they can sit back and take the energy off of those who are so very innocent and we have to recognize that and once we recognize that we pull ourselves out of their control grid and they no longer have anything holding them up but it, it takes recognition and unfortunately they have so many people in a state of chaos how can they stop and recognize that they're being manipulated i mean they have to run for their lives so it's not a very fair situation that we have going on here not a very fair one at all but still, that shouldn't mean that we should feel like the cards are stacked against us. No, we have to dig within. We have to realize our own power, know that we are creator beings. We can shift this. We can create a future that's not full of this, but a, a future where it is safe for other beings to come and find refuge, find safety. Right now, they're they're promising people so much if they come into this certain place you're going to get U ubi but what is that going to entail are they going to have to give away their are they going to have to give away their immune system are they going to have to give away functionality of their body there's going to be a trade there's definitely going to be a trade if anyone wants to just come and be comfortable and receive you know because there is this universal law of energy exchange and again <laughs> they, they twist that too they're very good at it but they have the they have hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of years to watch the cycles and watch human behavior so they know exactly how to manipulate people that's why it's so important to find your sovereignty 
if you're looking outside of the box, you're not going to be doing what they say. If you're not doing what they say, you're going to be a free being to create as you choose. Right now, so many people are not able to create as they wish because they're being manipulated by the controlling forces. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, and there was another comment. How can you trust the beings that you're communicating with? Because we've we've known these beings not just in this life, in other lives. We know them better than we know anybody that's physically walking around the planet. Their energy is very familiar. They've been with us our entire lives. And they give off feelings of extreme love and compassion. Very, very high frequency that, you know, we've never really experienced on this realm in in a 3d manner uh, that really again the frequencies from uh, the beings that are up in in fifth density sixth density and above the closer to source the the love that comes off of them is overwhelming it, it's just the type of love that can make you spontaneously cry because uh, not cry because of sadness but a crying of joy and this is the type of love that you know beings like the real yeshua had for us as as again that's a being that decided to come and take an incarnation in order to expose the system and what does the system do it turns his life into a blood sacrifice and even when you look at the eucharist and the catholic uh, quote unquote faith you know, that, that is not, is that not just a example of can, <clears throat> C-A-N, and you could figure out the rest of the world, that the word that ends in ism. This is the body, this is the blood. Think about what you're actually saying. One billion people follow the Catholic faith. And yet, you know, there were those Christians in the early church that believed that Yeshua was just an amazing teacher. They debated over whether he was God. Was he God? Was he separate from God? I mean, these things were all debated. They were not solved until uh, a series of, of different councils that were, again, instituted by the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine. Started in 325 AD, didn't finish until 383, I believe, uh, around there. And so, you know, again, everything you have, your, your whole fundamentalist and your mainstream belief system is given to you by the controllers, given to you by the same people that are pushing the climate change agenda. You know, again, yes, climate change is natural. We do have natural cycles. Many people are waking up to that as we see. Will Hamas blow up the Louvre in Paris? They just called in a bomb threat and people are evacuating. Uh, what an amazing building that is for sure. Again, why you're seeing the war at this time is because the awakening is coming too fast for them to control. This is their card that's up their sleeve. They have other cards to play. And those cards are very similar to what we saw starting in December of 2019, but more intense than that. And I know you guys know what, what we're talking about there. So you have an escalation at the Israel-Lebanon border. There's been a lot of uh, shelling going on and fighting going on. Meanwhile, there are warnings from multiple countries that if this doesn't stop, this is going to be a regional conflict which could obviously lead to WW3. This is the reason why is because people are waking up. This is why. People are waking up. Everything is being exposed. France mobilizes 7,000 troops for extra patrols after a teacher is slain. And France is on the highest level right now of, of um, alertness, so to speak. Yeah, France is, is, is a beautiful country. Uh, let's hope the prophecies uh, have shifted because, you know, when you look at the prophecies, again, from people like Nostradamus, Alois Ermeiler, there's many, many others, and we've covered them uh, throughout the years on all three channels. And we'll be um, switching. We've had, we had to because of the strikes on evolutionary um, keep less videos available. There's 303. We've done like four or 5,000 videos on evolutionary. Now they've removed 
um, a, a ton, maybe half, but we still have a whole bunch of others that we can uh, reinstate. I just didn't want to do it because uh, they were looking for an excuse to take the, the, the channel down permanently. Security of Northern Europe is increasingly important for our national security. So yesterday, uh, Rishi supposedly met with uh, you know officials in Sweden to announce more than 20,000 British troops will be deployed to the region next year. The reality is, you know, the, the troops, the war, it, it's, it's upon us. It is upon us. And, you know, again, mark our words because we've given uh, different events that are going to be happening going all the way back to January 2018. And we've talked about all this. We, we've talked about uh, eventually you're going to see uh, Chinese, Russian, and many other nations' troops in the United States. Well, you know, obviously, sleeper cells are already in place. But you will see uh, actual troop troops in the United States, and it's not too far off. Again, the vision that uh, Cindy got was June-ish, uh, early summer, late, very, very late spring, but you know, it, it felt like June, and the timeline uh, that she got was from December of 2022. She saw them say 1.5 years, and they've never done that. And they showed her what looked to be uh, Chinese and Russian troops in the Pacific Northwest. Now, that would bring us to June again of uh, next year, 2024. As you see, American weapons in the hands of Hamas. Did they come from Ukraine or Israel? Yeah. Absolutely. We understand what's going on. You know, the black hole that is Ukraine is funneling all sorts of weaponry. Again, they use our tax dollars to attack us, <laughs> you know, or have somebody else do it. But but in reality, you know, this is all part of the control system. So the F-16 shot down by a U.S. made Stinger missile originally sent to Ukraine, sold on the black market. Yeah, again, this is part of the big reveal. At some point, no, no, they're going to have, they already are having a hard time finding people uh, to send off to war because war is one big ritual sacrifice. Again, uh, Yeshua's true message was that wake up, you're in a dark system and you are so much more than what the system tells you you are. You're not slaves. You're not born to be slaves to any uh, any being, be it you know Allah or Yahweh or any of uh, the Anunnaki draconian power control structure, because again, they've posed as gods, but they've always been extraterrestrial and interdimensional beings. Mm -hmm. He also tries to point out that the the mainstream religion, which is the very Bible that they put in every single. Uh, a hotel room across America it's like the number one sold book that he says that's not my God that's not my religion he he denies that he denies that and so many people it's like they do this the the mainstream religion they want people to feel like they're trying to take away your Bible you know so they do this thing with human nature is like oh I'm gonna take this away and people think oh no I can't live without my religion but it's the religion that we can see that's leading people around and getting people to kill other people that's just as same as the WEF may as well written the Bible is Constantine written the Bible these are not nice people and they're writing things so that other people follow them. But if you really look what's written in there, how can you embrace that? I mean, I decided a long time ago, I tried, I tried, but that little voice inside of me knew, <laughs> you know, why is there so much genocide and why am I agreeing with a book that has so much genocide? It just felt so wrong because it is. But I had a really hard time facing that with myself. It, it was difficult because everybody else is doing it. And if I say, hey, I don't like this book, or I don't believe this, I have 10 people jumping on me calling me evil and horrible and a demon and a monster. You see how they really have us kind of against each other in such a big way? We should all be free to celebrate our creator. We should never be put in a position where we are told it's wrong the way you celebrate your creator. 
that's wrong. We should never be told that under any circumstances. And clar and clarifying creator, again, you know, this is the knowledge that we get from the golden age where we are in the understanding that that creator is is in us. We're all fractals. If you don't know what a fractal is, a fractal is that which reflects the whole and it, it's it's a, it's a smaller subdivision but it contains you know a, a reflection of the whole and that's what's taught in many of the secret hidden wisdom traditions so you don't need to go to church to commune with you know the real creator because the real creator is inside you right now and this is also what the Gnostics uh, taught. And, and they were stamped out, eradicated, and treated as heretics, even though they were in, in existence before the official version of Christianity came into being by the control system, by the uh, Roman emperor who had waged war, slaughtered people, killed his own wife and child. Somebody said, oh, well, that's because they were trying to kill him or they tried to kill him. That was a, a rumor that was never really truly verified. But any way you look at it, is that turning the other cheek? No, you know, and killing your own wife and child. Are you, how are you going to really excuse that ever? You know, there is no excuse for that. There is none. And yet they are always trying to make excuses because... The indoctrination is such a big one that it's painful for them to realize that all their belief system has basically been founded on lies. It's been trusting the same sort of people as trusting Klaus, as trusting Gil Bates, as, as trusting uh, all these, the Pope, the current Popes. You know, again, it's just mind-blowing. But this is how big it is. Of course, that's going to be their belief system. Of course. This is something um, that tells me that they're getting ready to, again, split the country up into uh, five pieces, maybe more. Um, after the war is done, the U.S. will be no more. Again, the Pluto return is coming to remake everything. And they have their plans for splitting it up into pieces and, and sending it off in different uh, directions as you have... Governor Abbott, who, you know, has a WEF page for all the things that he's done, you got to realize, too, like Cindy gets that he had good intentions originally, but, you know, they're, they, they, you know, look, look to the Kennedys, look to the assassinations, look to countless assassinations of people. Uh, when you're faced with a system that has the power to just, you know, always create accidents uh people will usually acquiesce uh when you're talking about their loved ones and go along with what the system wants so he's lining the texas new mexico border with razor wire uh again that's a massive border that's a huge border that's huge and, and this is between states, but I do think this has something to do with the division that's coming after the war, because again, uh, we have seen we've seen some maps that that do show Texas to Florida, <clears throat> and all the Gulf Coast states are going to be one unit, and you know some of the West is going to go off uh, in a different direction. Some might be given back to Mexico. Some's going to be controlled by China. Some controlled by Russia, some with a new European Union after uh, whatever is left of Europe comes back together. Yeah. Meanwhile, China's birth rate plummets 10%, lowest on record. It, it, the thing to realize is everything is kind of temporary because they've already told us Homo sapiens sapiens is, is not in the picture. Homo sapiens sapiens is not controllable enough. So they plan on uh, creating, and they've said this straight out, we're in the last generation or two of Homo sapiens sapiens. Now there's going to be two new types of humans, and one is going to be one that's much more emerge uh, with AI and really nothing but, um, nothing but an energy source and, and truly a slave source. And the other is going to be something that's going to appear to be superhuman because we're regaining our lost abilities. They've they've tinkered with our 
DNA. They've turned off DNA, and this is how they claim that they made us. They didn't make us. No, they're not the creators. You know, again, Yahweh is not the creator. Uh, Enlil is not the creator. Enki is not the creator. Allah is not the creator. And yeah, we're kind of different than those that try to smooth things over nice and gentle. Um, and, and, you know, yeah, there are core truths that you can find still, even in the darkest um, of belief systems. Even the most control controller-based belief systems, you can find some core truths. You can find some mystical information in there. Yet you can find that all very clear and and right out in the open in many other traditions. Uh, again, looking into Taoism and understanding how the yin and the yang complement and actually create the conditions for all that we see. We do need the duality to have this type of experience. But the control system is an artificial component, totally an artificial component. And what's happening is people are awakening so to such a great degree. Here you have a top climate scientist admits he wrote fake news to get published in science journals. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're waking up. Not just there, but again, all the, uh, you know, M-E-D-I call system as well has been a system of control. People are waking up when you see these tweets about people saying, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Ouch. Heck no. You know, this is why we have the war now. And I don't know if this person follows us or not, but, um, you know, this is, again, what we have brought up so many times, another person saying it. If you look at the population reduction that's coming in 14 months' time, and these are NATO, all NATO nations at the top of the list, besides a couple. But, again, with Libya, what did you see? You saw massive floods. Massive floods sweep away 20,000 people in, in one day. And you might think that's an act of God, but no, that's an act of technology, plain and simple. The UK, 77% population reduction. Ireland, 72%. US, 68.5%. Puerto Rico, Germany, Germany, 65%. Luxembourg, 61%. Israel, 48.3%. And again, Libya could be because of Israel. Again, the war, the greater war going on. This is what humanity has to wake up and say no. No, 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 no. We're not going along with this. But because they control us through our hatred. It, it's just like Star Wars with the Dark Emperor saying, Good, good. Feel that hatred. Yeah, they, they want to divide everybody into two camps. Or multiple camps constantly fighting each other. And this is what I'm talking about with more and more sightings. We're going to see this more often than not, you know, in the very near future moving forward because these beings are curious. They are watching. I would say most of them are neutral or rooting for humanity to wake up, understand their power, realize who they are, realize they are creator beings, and we don't have to put we don't have to create what is put in front of us by the control grid. They do want us to wake up and join a galactic movement with them where we will be able to go to different planets. We'll be able to go to different stars. We'll be able to join groups that look very much like this. They do gather around. They do talk about up and coming creations. We are talked about right now. We are being watched. In so many ways, this is very, very exciting. We are on the cusp of something that's just galactically huge. It's huge and it's exciting and any being would want to be close to watch it. So keep your eyes on the sky. It's very exciting. We work with hundreds of people um, for many different uh, reasons, mostly ascension, energy-related, spiritual coaching, etc., and the amount of people that can now see and, and detect their guides is growing. So when you see something like this, this picture I think is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I love the colors in this picture because these are the colors that I see 
but they're not vibrant enough to depict the colors that I see when the guides are close to us. Um, and I saw them for years without fully understanding. And, and in fact, again, I've shared with you, my brother was 16 when he died. At five, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. They didn't get it all. And in fact, um, through Cindy's work, I have come to understand that he was targeted because, you know, he might have done my mission if uh, he wasn't taken out, I think he probably would have done my mission. You would have a uh, you know, version different than me, but doing the same sort of thing uh, that was 11 years older than me um, because of them uh, taking him out in that manner. Uh, I ended up doing this and and he ended up supporting me behind the scenes because I do remember coming home from the funeral at five years old, standing there, and I would just sometimes I would go into the, almost like these trances, and I would hear a voice or know somebody's next to me. And so I found myself uh, at the kitchen table, and I, I still was dressed up in my little uh, suit, <laughs> you know, for the service, and I'm staring at the wall, and then I'm out of my body, and I'm looking at myself staring at the wall, and then I hear a voice saying, you're not your body, you know, you're not your body. And so at that point, I realized I'm not the body. And it would come back all the time, you know, through my youth, I would all of a sudden go into kind of a trance state. And I would know I'm not the body. And then sometimes it did scare me as a kid. And I'd go and like hang around my parents, uh, <laughs> because I didn't want to be alone. Because I had this feeling I would be out of my body and I was a little bit confused. But they told me other things too, like, you know, you don't have to be really sick. You could choose not to be sick. You could choose to overcome this. You could choose to overcome that. There's so many things that they told me and taught me over the years, always of a benevolent nature. These are not, um, these are not beings uh, of any sort of darkness. And in fact, most of the beings out there are beings that are totally in uh, agreement with the original plan for this universe, which is one of learning and exploration and creativity and just simply having fun, mm -hmm. simply having fun, coming in and having a different experience because ultimately we are eternal consciousness. We're just having a human experience. And the way the guides would always say that we don't want to interfere with your human experience is so telling because we're not always human. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, and, and, and that's just a cosmic law, non-interference, you know, allow, allow beings to explore to the best of their ability. Let them understand how expansive they are. You know, it's uh, when I was when I was little, it was really no big deal to leave my body. As I got older, though, it started to really scare me and I became very resistant of it. It took a while to get back to the point where I could do it again. But we all have these abilities. They're inside of each and every one of us. You know, these these animals, these four legged, beautiful creatures, they are ascending right along with us. They are learning how to play in different ways they're learning i was watching a little uh video this morning of a kangaroo hopping in front of a car and the kangaroo came to a stoplight and the stoplight was red and the kangaroo stopped i mean these these creatures are learning how to drive better than we can because i see so many people run the red lights they're just not even there they're not even conscious they're not even in in their body in a conscious way having an experience because they're probably distracted by technology or this distracted by that and they're missing out on so much but when you watch animals they have a way of pulling us back into the here and now and having us enjoy ourselves in a way that's um what nature intended so let me give you this again one final thought um about the control system you you've seen klaus say uh you're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy in other words they're saying you're going to be slaves you're going to be slaves because do slaves own anything no slaves are owned and when you look to the bible everybody gets this number right and you look to revelation 
which again, by the way, three to four hundred years after Yeshua Jesus uh, walked the planet, Revelation wasn't written by John that was one of his brothers and disciples. No, again, it, it's written it pseudepigraphically, so it's attributed to John, but it's not that John. Again, he didn't know Greek. He, he didn't know how to write in Greek, and the oldest ones we have are in Greek. They spoke Aramaic and Hebrew, you know, little things like that, that that should tip us off. But, you know, so many people are sound asleep on that. But when you go with, um, I'm going to give it back to Cindy in a second. But when you go with that message from the few about, you know, not owning anything and you're basically going to be a slave, that's exactly what's given in Islam. You know, we were in Islam, we were created by Allah to serve Allah and to do nothing but worship and praise Allah all the time. That's basically a slave. And and again, Adam and Eve placed in a garden to work it. But originally, earth didn't need to be worked. It was abundant for us. We didn't have to even work for our food because it was growing so abundantly. And we would graze. We didn't have organized agriculture. We didn't have to have organized agriculture. So you can see that what the few is telling you is what the Bible in, in this version of it and what the Koran are telling you. They're all telling you you're a slave. But when you look to, say, uh, the Bhagavad Gita and in the Western mystery tradition, in the Kabbalah, in Gnosticism, in, in, you know, in Hermetics and Hermeticism, and so many other traditions, sources in us. Nobody created you in that sense. Nobody created the uh, eternal aspect of you, the consciousness that inhabits the body. Oh yeah, the body was created, and yeah, in, in many ways you create your own body too. You guide its development. There's an etheric template uh, that is utilized to create the physical body from a, a higher density. But these things are spoken of openly in, in some traditions. It's well understood. Mm -hmm. And you know what's really been bugging me <laughs> for the last few days, and I mentioned it the other day, is look at the names in the Bible. I mean, if it's so authentic, where did we get Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John? I mean, those those names, they just crack me up. And it's a, it's a story written by someone who wants to control you, you know? I mean, we're not sitting here saying we want to take away your spirituality. No, we're trying to give you the freedom of spirituality, allow you to open your heart and realize that the manipulating forces have their fingerprints all over this thing. Yeah, another thing to ponder, true spirituality is not based on slavery. Right. That simple. It's not based on slavery. It's not or based... Ego. Uh, yeah, ego or serving some other bigger being. No, I mean, you've been indoctrinated into believing you're you're all about serving something. Well, you know, you can serve your fellow humans in, in that your life can be an, an example of cooperation and love and compassion and you're operating out of love and compassion. And through ser service to others, we most definitely lift ourselves up higher and higher and higher. We come from a place, as Cindy has said many times, a perfect love and, u and unity. We're having this exploration of something that's not, but we will return to that place of perfect love and unity. It's, uh, that is our destiny. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why we are always drawn to love, because that's where we come from. So that's kind of at the center of our being, but we're here to explore different kinds of love. Absolutely. So we look forward to your comments. Stay prepared. Do your meditations, your mantras. Put out your positive intention into the world, especially uh, in the upcoming time with the eclipse. God bless and namaste. Namaste.